All right, we're going to be looking at your Nocturne gameplay here. So, click you real quick. All right, so I chose this game because I feel like we died a little bit too much. And I feel like we shouldn't be dying that much, especially playing as Nocturne. We should have way more assists and kills because of the fact that our ultimate is such a good solo queue domination ability that we shouldn't really be in the position to be having more deaths than kill participation. So I picked this gameplay because I feel like there's different times either you're fighting where you shouldn't be fighting and you're taking engagements that you shouldn't be taking or you're fighting without your ultimate and you're just having problems doing anything with it because Nocturne's not really that great of a champion without his ultimate, as we all know. So we are playing Nocturne mid here. First thing we want to do is always understand the matchup. What about my matchup is different? What about my matchup does that Ari want to do? Well, we know that Ari wants to push you in. We know that Ari wants to poke. You know she wants to look to roam. And it's kind of the same thing that you want to do. You want to look to roam more often. But your push is always going to be better than hers because as an AD champion, you hit harder per auto. But also, you do have the cleave from your passive. And then when you get Tiamat, that's just, she's just not going to be a problem. What she's going to be able to do is keep up with your push, but she's never going to be able to out push you. So using that to your advantage is a real strength here, but also note you can't really look for kills on her. It's not going to happen unless she's out of position because you're going to have to get close. You're going to have to then uh, spell shield that charm. It's a lot of commitment. It's a lot of outplay potential where you're not really sure how good she is. So just going in the lane thinking that I could do this, I could do that is definitely going to net you with a lot of um, depression because you're gonna try it, you're gonna die. You're gonna try it again, you're gonna die. And we wanna go for those 100% plays. We don't wanna go for the coin flips. So if we don't know for sure, we don't go for them. Next thing that we wanna kinda look at here that I took out was a 305. I feel like we need to understand when a play is over, a play is over. So as we see here, going for this play. Beautiful, I love it. You, you shoved up, you roamed. And not lose as much CS as you would. You, you, you did a good job. I like it. What we notice here is you're going for this play. You're going for the kill. Cool. We have to assume because Ari's not there anymore. She's going to follow us. We have to assume whenever we roam, we're going to get it followed. Just assume. That way you know how long you can take making your play. We also, we also have to understand we don't really know where Warwick is. So Warwick can be around too. So we go for the play. We get the kill. Nice. Looking at the HP from the Elise. Looking at the HP from the Morgana. We're not really in a good spot to continue this play if somebody else has decides to roll up on us. So Ari decides to show up, not even enough to really do anything. Then you go for the kill because you're like, well, we already committed. And they end up dying for it too. So three, or not three, I'm sorry. Two people ended up dying for a play that was actually good that turned out bad. So know when a play is over. Know when there's not much else you can get out of a play because that is hugely important so that you don't overstay, not just for towers, but for fights, for objectives, everything. When you know a play is over, when you can formulate in your head, there's no way I can do any more, you're done. A really good way you can go about this is think about what you're gonna do. You're like, okay, I wanna roam, I wanna get this kill on the Sona, boom. If that's the plan, we don't do anything after that because there's nothing else for us. If we didn't see that far, the play was over then. There was nothing else to get out of it if we didn't see that far. So now we're just kind of going off of instinct. Now we're going off of impulse. And what that does is makes us do plays that doesn't really make sense on paper, but it looks good in our head. And when we can get out of that mindset, when we can get that discipline, something that all high level players have is discipline. They know when to tell themselves no. Of course, we're only human, we mess up sometimes, but for the most part, they know when to say, hey, no, this is not gonna work, I can't do it. Uh, this I tried this a game before and it didn't work. I'm not doing it. Or I tried it during the game and it didn't work. I'm not doing it. All high level players know how to say, this is not going to work. I cannot do this. Put that in your head. Put that in your head that I'm going for this. Oh, this is too much. I can't do this. And that way you can get out of that rhythm of just playing off of impulse and playing off of instinct. It helps out a lot. And they'll thank me for it later. You don't want to get greedy. You don't want to get greedy. Okay, 653. So let's play right here. 
first thing we have to remember that Nocturne is a really good, as I said at the start of the, it's the start of the, the game, or at the start of the uh, replay. He excels off of dominating with his ultimate, right? He excels off of having that one ability that if he sees someone picked off, he's going to ult, shroud the entire map, including their screens, and they cannot really see what's going on. That is massive. So with an ability like that, it has a long cooldown. Most abilities in this game have long cooldowns if they're a really game-changing ability. Knowing this, we don't want to waste our ability. So before we use our ultimate, we want to make sure that we can even impact a play. Because once your ult is down, you're no longer a threat. So I look for this play. We ult in. Nothing's wrong with it. And then we get there, but we can't do anything. Right? Now look at this play. Did we really get this kill? Because that ultimate? No, right? The play was over if we go back a little bit before. She already did her repel. When she comes down, she's gonna get already charmed. There is nothing you can do here. Nothing. Once again, we don't know where Warwick is. He could be here. If he is, you wouldn't you would have died. You wouldn't even have gotten out. Lucky you got out and you got a kill. But it's a risk play. We only want to go for a hundred percent I can do it. I can do it. When I get into this, I can do it. Considering that there's nothing there for you to basically have a follow-up on. Renekton wasn't close enough and Elise was gonna die by the time you get there, it wasn't worth the play to go for. Because now we're missing an opportunity to be able to ult the bot lane. If we see that play happening, and we see Ari rotating, maybe we can go ahead and look towards bot, see if we can get ult off. See what happens in the next couple of seconds. Just to be sure. If there's any ult plays we can make. So let's say we didn't go to that, right? And let's say we just happen to ult right now. Look how close she is, man. That's a free kill, right? Use your ult to go for 100% plays because when it is down, it is down. And when it's down, you're not a threat. Not in a sense of, well, I have my ultimate and I can kill people, but in a sense of the team knows you don't have your ultimate, which means they can play however they want to. Champs like Nocturne, champs like, um, I'm trying to think. Champs like Nocturne, where they have the ability to, uh, like Shin, Toasted Fate, there we go. I don't know why that mine blinked me for a second. Champs like that with global pressure, champs like that with ways to get to lanes really, really quickly, people are afraid of. But And they'll play back for the most part, especially in higher elo. But once you use it, they don't care about you anymore because they know you're not gonna be able to get there in time. They can see you coming before you come. So holding it is way more impactful for that 100% play than just using it to get somewhere that to a fight because it makes you speedy. You know, you don't want to use your ultimate because you're fast to get to a fight. You want to use your ultimate because I know the outcome of this fight is going to be positive. Next one that I have here is 843. All right. So this play going on right now is the play where we go for Warwick. When going for these fights, you know, especially, especially with skirmishes, pay attention to to the counterplay that each champion has for you. That way, you can make the play accordingly. So when we go on a Warwick, we know he has his fear, and we know he has his bite. And of, of course he has his ultimate, right? Three abilities that can proc your spell shield. If you walk in with the spell shield, he can just Q you with his, with his bite, and then he'll fear you backwards, and then he'll just run away. So that means, well, I have to make sure that I time my W after he bites me, so that he can't Fear me backwards. He can still ult you, or you can still ult out, but at least you're, you're, you're blocking the fear. His only counterplay is if he fears you. So that's the main thing you want to think about. Now we do know that Ari's going to be able to rotate. So now we have to think about, well, Ari's going to charm us. We only have one spell shield. And if this is the ability we have to worry about, we have to then dodge this ability. So this is requiring you to play this extremely well to work. I mean, it's not that great of a play, even though our release is coming. You have to play extremely well, and that's a coin flip. What if one day you're not feeling that great? You know, you're not playing the best. You're going for a play that's requiring a lot of mechanical knowledge when you could just be going for the play that is about macro decisions. You can go for the play that's the correct play. So we go on this, 
Of course, we get feared back, then we get charmed, and we die. Now, upon further... Uh, upon... <laughs> I can't even speak. Upon further spectating the game, I, I played it back a couple of times, and I realized we also don't have our spell shield. It is perfectly fine to wait for your abilities to come off a of cooldown before you go for an engagement like this. That way you're ready. That way we're allowed to have all of our abilities. Because even if you have one down, especially if it's one of your core ones, all three of his abilities are core, honestly. And it's not many champs that have something like that. If we have one down, we're at a disadvantage already. Because we don't have our, our third ability. So essentially we have six abilities against two. She's not here yet. Not great odds, not great odds. So waiting for the abilities to be up so that you can play this fight better would be great. And okay, let's say we do want to go for this. This is fine. Use your E or just sit there and go back and forth to at least buy time for her to get there and also buying time for your ability to come up so that you can use it. Once again, the engagement without the ability is going to make a really, really poor play. Not only do you have to play this play right, but you also have to have your abilities, which you don't have and also playing it right those are the hard plays to go for those are the hard plays that just aren't going to make much effort you can have a play where we ult down and we kill the caitlin that's overextending we're gonna make a play where we ult here and try to win a 2v2 even though we're not really that ahead we can make a play where we can go down here and try to get warwick or we can make a play to wait for our for our ultimate i mean i'm sorry not our um I was pointing out a Q, <laughs> but our ultimate, which is right here, and make a play down bot with Elise because she is still bot side. 100% plays is how you're going to climb. You're in diamond right now, but to get the master, to get the grandmaster, to get the challenger, you're going to have to go for plays that are ha that have a higher success rate. And the only way that you can allow them to have a higher success rate is finding the plays that actually have high success rates. Very, very crucial for you to be thinking about that type of stuff. Um. The next point and the last point here is don't look to over roam. If there are no opportunities to roam, there are no opportunities to roam. Definitely want to make sure that you, if we go here after this fight, you come back. Cool. And like you shove and you look to go roam. But as was not even in the lane yet. And you shove and you look to go roam. Get the plates. Get the get the minions propel yourself further get that gold get that income so that way when you do go down and oh you're higher in levels you're higher in um you're higher in income so much yeah that's two plates you could have gotten two plates hands down after that if anything just one if anything it's way better than you kind of just walking around not really doing much A lot of time wasted that we could have just been using to get our levels. So what I'm saying is we do not want to look to force roams if there's really no opportunities for us. If our ADC is not in lane, you're going to have to 2v2. And Morgana is not really a damage dealer, right? So you're going to have to basically 1v2. If our top laner is not in lane and we're going to roam the top, I mean, we're going to have to 1v1 that top laner and we're behind right now. That's probably not the best idea. If you're going to invade the jungle, you're not going to do it without your jungler, or you're not going to do it unless you're fed. Same concept. There's no reason to roam if you feel like there's no opportunities for you. So understanding that so you're not wasting time will allow you to make sure that you have a lot of gold, will allow you to make sure that you have a lot of um, levels. Because if you over roam, what's going to happen is you're going to mess up, you're not going to get anything, you're going to force a play, which is kind of like that that first play with you roam. You, you, you force the play. And then you got greedy. Even though that one play worked, you got greedy and then we continue to die. Same exact thing is going to happen when you come down here, force a play that they already see is going to come because they awarded for you because they know it's going to happen. And you fall right into that trap and you get caught and you die. If there's no, if there's no opportunities that are 100%, so go ahead and roam, go ahead and ult too. You just don't go for them. So the main thing that I think we should be working on and the main thing that I think that we're struggling on is definitely the fact that we need to make sure that we're not 
just willy-nilly using our ultimate. We need to make sure that when we ult, it is a 100% play. It is a play that's going to work. It is not a play that I have to play properly, so to speak. When I say properly, not like, you know, properly, but more so really, really well. You don't want to go for those plays. You want to go for the plays that I know if I ult in, I'll do the average ability rotation, I will get the kill. I will proceed then to either go with my plan and go for another, or we just leave, right? Know when the play is over. Very important. You can't go for a play and then keep pushing that play because that will end, end us with death. And finally, make sure that we are paying attention to our cooldowns and we're not looking to force fights without them. And on the same note, and the last note here, is we just don't want to make, we just don't want to overrun. We don't want to force too many plays because we're basically relying on our teammates when we're forcing plays. I'd rather any day of the week go for a play that my teammates are messing up and I can clean up and try to force a play with my team and get let down and we all die for it. So I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. Uh, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. And without further ado, Coach Blaker signing off.